hybrid work is here to stay and the need of the hour is to build new ways for people to connect and collaborate securely from wherever they're working so we can empower human ingenuity at scale. We begin the day with a keynote titled Winning in a Hyperconnected World of Work with Jared Spataro, Corporate Vice President, Microsoft 365. Hello to our friends in India and thank you for having me here today at Future Ready. Organizations around the world are charting their path forward into this new world of work. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share some of our insights into the changes we see coming and why we think embracing this new world of work can be better for every organization. You know, this is such an historic moment. It's a moment that is rewiring the economy. It is redefining the patterns of work. And in fact, the entire labor market is changing in very significant ways. The question that we're asking ourselves here at Microsoft is, what will the next decade of work look like? That brings us to a term that we see so often in the headlines of the news these days, hybrid work. But we don't often see a simple definition. Here at Microsoft, we define hybrid work as flexibility. Flexibility specifically in how, when, and where you work. Now, no one knows exactly how this is going to play out. Flexibility will come together in new and exciting, sometimes even challenging ways. And so to chart our course forward, we're trying to use data and not dogma. We're trying to go out and look across three different sources of data. First is our own telemetry, where we're able to see what's happening as people use our tools. Second, we're going out and doing our own surveys to try and understand how people are experiencing these changes themselves. And finally, we're working with other institutions, customers and other educational institutions to do research, to understand how these various trends are interacting with each other. We recently published the Work Trends Index. It's a survey of over 30,000 people in 31 countries. And we asked them about their experience in remote and hybrid work. A specific question that caught my attention was what those people hoped would persist post-pandemic. 73% of the survey respondents said that they hope that the flexible work options that they've enjoyed during the pandemic continue. But at the same time of the same people, 67% said that they recognized they needed and wanted more in-person, face-to-face -face collaboration. This sets up what we call the hybrid paradox. Essentially, people want the best of both worlds. We also did some work within Microsoft, asking our employees to sort themselves into two categories. Those who would stay in the office to do their work most of the time, and those who felt like they would do most of their work from home. We asked them why they made these choices. Interestingly enough, 58% of the people who said that they would work from the office said they would do so because of focus time. They felt like they could do their best focused work there in the office. But coincidentally, 58% of the people who said they were going to work most of the time from home said that they were going to do it for the exact same reason, for focus time. This led us to the conclusion that no one size fits all. People want to be able to embrace these new patterns of work, but they all have different circumstances. Another data point that jumped out to me has led us to what we're now calling the great reshuffle. When we asked that same broad group of 30,000 people all across the world a question about their current employment, 41% of them said that they expected to leave their current employer within the next 12 months. 46% of those people said that they were planning a major shift, a major career shift. 48% said that they were planning to move house. Taken together, what we realized is that there truly was a great reshuffle. We see this referred to as a great resignation. But from our perspective, it's more about people rethinking the why of work, rethinking where they work, rethinking how work fits into their lives, into their integrated whole. Now, I wish I could tell you that in this new world of flexible hybrid work, that in this new world that offers so much choice to workers, that all would be simpler and easier. But the truth is that the world will get a bit more complex. This chart that you see here just simply charts space versus time. You can already see that in this new world, you're going to need a set of investments that help you to bridge the different modes of working together and working on our own. To thrive in this new world, every organization needs a digital fabric to bind the organization together with secure communication, collaboration, and creation. This digital fabric enables flexibility and strengthens connections between people and teams. It connects them to the organization's mission and culture. It weaves data, 
automation and AI into the flow of work. It extends outside to partners and customers, and it includes every type of worker, information workers, frontline workers, and flex workers, and every function from HR to sales and marketing. It's a competitive advantage. And the Microsoft Cloud is the only cloud that has everything companies need to create this digital fabric. And at the center of it all is Teams. Because of the complexity of hybrid work, we're going to need not just a plan to get back into the office, but really a plan for a brand new operating model, a new way of thinking about how your organization works together, how they get the work done. I like to refer to the new operating model as the three Ps. It's a rethink of people, places, and processes. As you take this expansive view, you're able to see that there are many things that can be better if we're very thoughtful about how we blend what we've learned over the last two years together with amazing technologies and innovations. I'll start first with people. And all of us know that work is about more than just getting things done. It's about the connections between people. And what's exciting and also very unique about this time is that we are seeing something that we have never seen before, at least in my lifetime, and that is changes that are impacting all types of workers and all types of jobs across an organization. The initial waves of digital transformation that swept over companies several decades ago really focused on what you might call office or back office workers. But today, we see digital transformation sweeping across every role type. Let's start with information workers. Gartner predicts that by the end of 2021, 51% of information workers will work from home part of the time, an amazing transition over just the two years of the pandemic. Then let's move over to frontline workers. Here we find technology being used in unique and novel ways and truly transforming those roles. We think about curbside pickup. We think about all of the things that are happening for a frontline worker to have technology in their hands and even as a field technician to do things they were never able to do previously. And finally, flex workers. Here we see increasingly people opting out of traditional roles and into much more flexible roles where they're able to use technology to come in and out, to maintain context and to contribute in very significant ways. Now at Microsoft, we're learning that it's important to use culture as one of the best ways to move your organization forward. In fact, we would recommend that you be very careful with just policy. It's important to recognize that we're all still learning here. And as you set many rigid policies, it's difficult to flex with the moment. So we're trying to empower all of our people to use culture and particularly our managers to use culture to shape this new operating model as we go forward. For example, one policy that really ends up being the central policy for what we're doing is a policy that people at Microsoft can work from home up to 50% of the time and even more with their manager's approval. Beyond that, we're having managers and people work together to figure out what culture we need to build to be able to work with this flexibility. Now for us, this digital fabric, the work that we're doing all around the operating model is based on Teams. Teams really is the new front end. It combines meet, chat, call, collaborate, and increasingly automate together into a single app in a way that nothing else does. It really is a transformative technology because it allows you to create those connections across your entire enterprise. But we recognized during the pandemic that Teams alone wasn't enough. We also needed a way to create digital social cohesion. And that's why we introduced Microsoft Viva. Viva is a new employee experience platform. It has the persistence that's needed to create connections and relationships that go beyond the project, go beyond the deliverable or the meeting. Viva originally launched with four modules, connections, insights, learning, and topics. And recently we've added another through acquisition of Ally. Insights helps you to work smarter and is helping us focus more on employee well-being. Let's take a closer look. As organizations adapt to collaboration in a hybrid world, they'll be able to use Viva Insights to make meetings more effective. Viva Insights users will see how consistently they're following meeting best practices, like starting meetings on time and including an agenda. Of course, this information will be private, like all personal insights in Viva. Only the meeting organizer will see their meeting effectiveness data. Users can also create a shared meeting plan so their team can follow the same meeting norms. With only a few clicks within the Viva Insights app, 
select the meeting practice and team members to share the plan with. Viva Insights will also help users understand how they're spending their own meeting time to evaluate how that matches up with their goals. For example, users will see what proportion of meeting time they spend with customers and other people around the company as well as within their own team. Soon, managers and team leads will have help staying connected with their teams through intelligent reminders to do things like schedule one-on-one time and respond to unanswered mentions in documents or chats. Insights for managers and team leads can also help set team norms, like designating specific no-meeting days to give people a chance to catch up on focused work. And managers can use the Send Praise feature to recognize the team's accomplishments more easily and add a badge along with a custom message. Now let's move on to places. There's definitely a need to transform our physical spaces as more and more work adapts to the flexibility of hybrid. Our principle for places is designing for people who are not in the room. It's entirely flipping the mode of design on its head. What we're looking for here as we do this is the bridge between the physical and the digital. We've recently introduced something that we call front row. This is a brand new orientation of a meeting room setup where in fact, because we're planning and designing for the people not in the room, we don't have the people in the room looking at each other, but instead at the beamed in presence from people as you see here who are coming in digitally. Everyone can be seen, heard and participate on equal footing. Going forward, your digital spaces will be just as important as your physical. We've recently introduced Microsoft Mesh, our metaverse platform. It allows you to create persistent digital worlds with connections to the physical world. And we're building Mesh into Teams for immersive experiences. Let's take a look. How you project yourself and appear in an immersive space is important, so we're giving you control to customize your avatar. And what's great is that you can bring your physical presence into conversations even when you don't have your camera turned on. These avatars are powered by AI to imitate subtle movements and gestures based on voice and tone. They also animate according to your live reactions in Teams. Let's look at the immersive space we created with Accenture, with lobbies, welcome areas, meeting rooms, the works. The freedom to explore these spaces really gives you the feeling of being together, the opportunity to have spontaneous connections. Just look at how everyone in the space is socializing and connecting with each other. Additionally, Mesh is built on Azure, so if a colleague in Korea speaks to me in Korean, I can simply read what they're saying without a translator. It's all about inclusivity and accessibility. We're also bringing Microsoft 365 apps into the Mesh experience. I can walk into a space with a digital whiteboard and feel as if I'm there together with colleagues as we brainstorm on a digital canvas. With Microsoft 365 integration, users can seamlessly access content, files, or documents via OneDrive, which you can edit, annotate, or share with others. You can even use 3D objects and interact with them as you would in the real world. Now, of course, fully embracing the metaverse will likely take some time, as will redesigning your physical space. So in the meantime, here are some practical tips for your next hybrid meeting. First, just make sure that in the space where people are gathered, there's a centralized audio device with a great mic. Second, make sure that everyone turns their cameras on, even if they're physically present. That way, everyone can be seen very clearly. And finally, designate a moderator and make sure that moderator's job is to ensure that everyone can be seen and heard. The final element of the new operating model is process. This transition to hybrid gives us an incredible opportunity to reimagine every business process, to really rethink how digital technologies can help us be even better post-pandemic than we were before. Let's start with a broad categorization of the processes you have running today. There are ad hoc processes where we often are focused on creativity and problem solving, and then structured processes where we can actually even automate and streamline those processes for greater efficiency. Recently, we announced a brand new app to help us with those ad hoc creative processes. It's called Microsoft Loop. Loop lets you think, plan, and create together. It is a brand new approach to how teams get work done. Let's take a look. Loop consists of three core elements, Loop Workspaces, Loop Pages, and Loop Components. Loop Workspaces are shared spaces that allow you and your team to see and group everything important to your project, add office docs, notebooks, files, links, whiteboards, or anything else related to your project. 
And then there are loop pages. These are flexible canvases that start small and grow to match the size of your ideas. Pages put the focus on your work and bring together the powerful tools that adapt to meet the needs of your project. Every loop page can feature loop components. These live connected experiences allow the team to pull in live business records, track tasks, or capture progress. But it's not just about content. It's also about connecting with people. Loop always keeps you and your team in sync. You can brainstorm, create, and build on each other's work. You can react to each other's ideas, express your thoughts, and celebrate your achievements together. And all of these capabilities aren't limited to just your Loop app. With Loop Components, you can bring any part of your workspace into Teams, Emails in Outlook, or whatever app your team is using in the moment. So this is Microsoft Loop, a place where everything comes together, keeping you and your team more productive, on track, and closer than ever before. This acceleration in digital transformation also means that you can streamline structure processes. And we can do that with Microsoft Power Platform. It uses low-code or no-code solutions to automate routine tasks to ensure that you're improving efficiency every step of the way. You know, one of the hardest things about this new operating model, people, places, and processes, is putting it all together. One of the companies that we've seen do a fantastic job here is outdoor and sporting goods retailer REI. They embraced hybrid and satellite offices and even sold off their corporate campus. They've used teams to stay connected, not just across their corporate employees, but also now in that digital fabric to bring together their store associates. And they've added new virtual selling as a brand new sales motion, a new thing that didn't exist pre-pandemic that allows them to connect with their customers in new and exciting ways. You know, we are facing right now in all of these changes, what could be called a once in a generation challenge. The shift to hybrid won't be easy. As I indicated earlier, it introduces a lot of new complexity, a lot of new problems that need to be solved. No one has all the answers and we're going to need flexibility. But it's not just a challenge, it's also an opportunity. And I'm optimistic about the future. Companies that embrace this new operating model, that really make it work for them, will have a competitive advantage in the marketplace with talent and with all the processes that make their business run. Now, before we go, let me leave you with a few additional resources that I hope will be helpful in your transition to hybrid work. The first is a hybrid work guide. It's an overview of Microsoft's approach and the decisions that we're making. We're all learning as we go, but we hope it will be helpful for you. And the second is WorkLab, a brand new site that brings together our research and thought leadership about the changing nature of work. Thank you again so much for taking the time to be with us. We look forward to hearing what you do as you innovate in this transition to hybrid. Thank <laughs> you.